All right, let's take a look at topic number 12 today, composition of functions. So we talked about the transformation of function, which is actually how the graph, okay, is moving around, you know, reflecting along the x-axis, y-axis, the vertical stretch, um, the vertical compress. And then we, we know in the previous topic, we also talk about operation of two functions. You can add them, subtract them, multiply and divide them. So what is considered as a composition of function is almost like your input, you are taking one function and substitute into another function. A com the composition of a function is input one function and then into another function. And thus you're gonna output a totally to something else, okay? The composition of function is denoted as f of g. This circle is called of, of, f of g, and is defined as f of g of x, which is denoted in this form. So a lot of students say, okay, what does this thing mean? Well, this symbol, okay, f of g of x means this. And so what this is, is, is having function g of x being inside of function f. So that means I'm actually, f of g is taking function g and put it inside of function f. So I'm taking the whole entire function and put it into another function. So f of g of f, excuse me, f of g of x means function g goes inside of function f. So vice versa, if I see, if I show, if I say g of f of x, that means now function f will actually be inside of function g. So this will be f inside g. All right, so here is my function f, my function g. Write it out. This is simply write it out what f of g of x means. So f of g of G, um, f of g of x means function g gonna go inside f. So I'm taking my function g, which is x plus one, and substitute into my function f, wherever I see an x. So my function f of g of x will now equal to, well, Normally function f says 4x squared, right? Now you will say four times x plus one squared, right? Because this x being replaced with x plus one plus six times x plus one, then plus two. All right, so number one, just write it out. Number two, I want you to actually simplify. So this is a little bit of work because technically, Right here, I got three terms. My first term is this. It has a square right there. So technically, this problem is four times x plus one times x plus one. So by going over perfect square binomial, you remember perfect square binomial, a plus b, whole thing squared, equal to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. So right now it's x plus one whole thing squared. So my a is x, my b is one. So if you memorize a formula, you can just look at x plus one whole thing squared and say, okay, my a got to be squared plus a two times my a times my b. A two times my x times my one is two x plus my b is one got to be squared, which is still one. So technically the four is actually gonna end up multiplying the entire x squared plus two x plus one. All right, second term, positive six will do a distribution. So that should give me a positive six x, positive six. My last term still positive two. So when this positive four distribute, I should get four x squared, positive ax, positive four. And now you will combine with positive six X, positive six and positive two. 
All right, so combine like terms. This is 4x squared. Um, AX, 6x combined, positive 14x. 4 plus 6 plus 2, positive 12. So my output function, f of g of x, my output function is 4x squared plus 14x plus 12. So when I, when I took this function g and put it into function f, I actually come out with another, a little bit different quadratic function. All right, let's look at another one. All right, let's write out f of g of x. Okay, so this means g go inside f. So I'm taking my entire function g and substitute into function f wherever I see an x, which is only right there. Right, I know this is only one term, but since this x is being squared, when I substitute, I, I can put a parenthesis around this square root of x plus two because I, because I have an exponent on, on the outside. So this f of g, oh, sorry. This f of g of x now will become square root, replacing that x with x plus two, but that x was squared. So this whole thing needs to be squared plus one. So now number two, I'm gonna simplify this. All right, square and square root. Well, so, so, so this plus sign right here means this is this first term, right? So within one term, you can say, okay, square and square root cancels out. I just end up with an x plus two, but I still got my plus one on the back. So that will be x plus three. <clears throat> All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this real quick, okay? Go to my calculator. Instead of graphing this simplified f of g, x plus three, I'm gonna graph the original one. The original one after I substituted was parenthesis, oops, parenthesis square root of x plus two. So my calculator, when I type, when I press the square root, it automatically opened the parenthesis for me. So I'm going to close the parenthesis for the square root that indicates that the two and the x is underneath the square root. Then I'm going to close the parenthesis that I opened originally. I opened one originally for here. So now I'm going to close it so I can say square before I say plus one. So by looking at what we simplified down to, this is going to be a straight line but not quiet because if it's just an x plus three, this is a linear line, right? But this is actually not a whole entire line. You're missing, you're missing a lot of it because originally this is actually considered as a radical function. So if I were, um, if I were, it's a radical function and the x squared. That's, that's, what's we, that's what's strange about it. If I would rewrite what I substituted, it was a x plus two whole thing squared plus one. So if you look on the table, you will notice anything to the left side of negative two is all the y value says error. Why is that? Why is that? Well,
sorry about that. My internet is acting up. Can you still see me? Well, I hope you can see me. I'm gonna share one. I'm share one's on my screen. All right. So everything to the left of negative uh, negative two does not exist. Okay. There's another way of what I'm showing y'all here. A lot of students will say, okay, to know the domain by hand, you said was inside, you said was inside um, the radical greater than zero and solve for X. Well, greater than equal to zero, excuse me. So it indicates that all the x value got to be bigger than or equal to negative two. Okay, very similar to what I'm doing because when you can set it bigger than equal to, I mean, there's an equal right there. So you know, you know it's gonna be, you know, you know it's gonna be bigger than negative two. But here's the thing though, how would you know not to set it as x plus two less than equal to zero? Okay, so then a lot of times, you know, different teacher teach this 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 part differently. Um, some teacher will say, well, if there is a negative sign in front of that x, if there's a negative sign in front of that x, then you will need to set it as less than equal to less than equal to zero. True, it is true, but the reason is, if there was a negative sign in front of that x inside the inside the radical if you graph it it's going to go the other direction that's the reason why you set it as less than equal to zero so that's the reason why i i don't do it with the inequality the way i do it is we we'll set whatever is inside the radical equal to a zero so you so you know where your domain will begin or end to confirm that you graph it the whole point was to encourage students to look at the pictures of the graph so so what we do by hand makes sense all right so i want so i just want to show you that hey even though we even though we we simplify this this function down to a linear but it does not mean the graph is actually a linear function okay because linear function is a straight line and i'm missing the other half of the line all right, I'm going to do this vice versa. This time I'm going to do g of f. g of f means function f. Now go inside function g. All right, so let me erase up here. So now I'm going to take function f. Substitute into function g. Wherever I see an x. So g of f of x will now be square root of x squared plus one. I can put the x squared plus one in the parentheses, but since there's really no no other number in front of that x or exponent to for me to do any distribution, then I don't really need a parentheses to protect those two terms. Plus two. All right. Number four, simplify it. So once I simplify this. Only thing I can do is combine like terms in there. Because this cannot be split apart. This square root of x squared plus three does not equal to x uh, square root of x plus square root of three. It does not equal to that. The only time you can split a radical into two parts if it's multiplication. So if I had, so we, we might have reviewed this before. If you have a three X square, because this is only one term inside the square root, inside the radical, then you can split up this into two separate parts. But it had to be multiplication. It had to be one term underneath the radical. So if you got more than one term, you cannot split them. That goes together. All right, so that's all you can do is combine the one and the two. All right. All right, let's try another one, okay? 
I want you to write function f of x as a single term. So I mentioned this before, whenever we are combining a whole number with a fraction, we can always use that same trick as what we will be doing with a mixed number convert into a improper fraction. Because for example, four and a half means four plus one over two. So we can say take the denominator times the whole number and then add on to the one. The reason why I'm adding the numerator because this is an addition sign. So that's how we get what nine over two, right? Same thing here. Take the denominator times the whole number. And then we're going to add to the numerator. All right. So x minus 2 times 4. x minus 2 times 4 is 4 times x minus 2. Because it's a 2 term times 1. So I got to kind of put them in the parentheses. Plus my x plus my numerator x, whole thing over x minus two, All right? That's still my LCD. So to write f of x as a single term, now, once I take the denominator times the whole number plus the numerator, all I'm gonna do is simplify the top a little bit. So if you want, you can simplify the top on the side. All right, four, four will do a distribution, four times x, four times negative two, that'll be four x minus eight still plus x combine like terms that should give me 5x minus 8 still over x minus 2. so that's how we go from two terms into one terms quickly number two write g of x as a single term so same thing take my denominator times the whole number then plus the numerator so x times 2 is 2x plus 1 is 2x plus 1 over denominator just x. All right, so this time the x times 2, I did not put them in the parentheses because the denominator only has one term. When the denominator has two terms, I had to multiply the whole number. I got to put those denominator in the parentheses because I got to do distribution. All right, so this is this is function f now. This is function g now. f of g, number three, f of g means I'm going to put function g inside of function f. Function g is that. Substitute, substitute into function f. Wherever I see an x, take this entire function g, replace it wherever I see an x. So my f of g of x now would look like five, no, function f normally says five times x. Now five will actually multiply the function g minus eight, whole thing over. All right, this x is now replaced with two x plus one over x and then minus two. That's what it will look like. All right. So now this thing, what you're looking at is called a complex fraction, okay? I don't know if I reviewed complex fraction before. Um, I don't think I did because I mentioned it. I will actually talk about it when we get to it. So now the way how you're simplifying a crazy thing look like this, there are two techniques, okay? One of them is actually multiply every term of your, of your expression by the LCD. So you got to find the LCD first, okay? You got to find the LCD first. So the way how you find the LCD is look at the denominator. You remember, watch out now that all the exponent, you don't have any other exponent than one. So this X is X to the first power. This denominator, the LCD I'm looking for is right here and right here. That X is to the first power. This X is to the first power. So your LCD is simply just X, okay? Now we want to multiply every term by x. Okay, every single term multiplied by x. So what that means is if you look up on, on the numerator, 
the numerator, here's a subtraction sign. So the first term on the numerator is all this, okay? This is only one term. Now that one term will times by x. And why do I times by x? So that denominator will cancel out. So in a way I'm finding the LCD so I can clear the fractions. I can clear the fractions within the fractions. Second term negative eight will times x. First term in the denominator times by x. This is the first term denominator that will also times by x. The second term, the second term in the denominator will times by x. Okay, so what does it multiply by x do? Well, if you take the first term times by the LCD x, the x means x over one. So the top x, bottom x will cancel out. So the only thing you got left is the five times the two x plus one. Second term, negative eight times, now what times x will be negative ax over, all right, LCD times the first term down here, that x means x over one, top x, bottom x cancels out. Only thing you got left is simply two x plus one. All right, last term times by x, negative two x. There you go. Look a lot nicer now. Simplifying the numerator and the denominator, by distribution and combining like terms. All right, so I'm gonna distribute and I'm write it down here. So the numerator, five times two X is 10 X. Five times positive one, positive five. Minus AX over two X, <laughs> two X minus two X actually cancels out. So you only end up with one in the bottom. So technically this whole thing now just becomes two X plus five. So my entire f of g of x now simply becomes 2x plus 5. All right, so a lot of students say, well, that looked like a linear function, but it is not. Uh, original, the original function, this original thing before I multiply by the LCD is actually the graph, you, you know, it's actually the function you want to graph. All right, this is a whole, this is a big mess. Because if I will ask you, if I will ask you, what is the domain? Remember, the picture will look like a straight line, but what is what should be the domain? And if you said negative infinity to positive infinity, you will be wrong because it's not a straight line. It is a rational function. So one of the key thing about rational function is the restriction on the domain. These x's cannot equal to zero because normally to find a restriction on domain for rational functions, we set the denominator not equal to zero and solve for x. So we only know x cannot equal to zero. So the domain got to be from negative infinity all the way to zero using parentheses, right? Union, the other side of it, the other side of it got to be from zero to infinity. So this thing will look like a straight line, but actually you actually cannot equal to zero, okay? So there's actually a little gap, not a hole. It just doesn't ever exist there. A hole, technically, a hole in a rational function, technically something got canceled out between top and bottom. But here, it's just a straight line. The calculator will not even show you a hole, but there's actually not a hole, but there's a little gap. The function exists this way and function exists the other way, okay? Those, so that's why when we describe it using the, um, when we describe it, describe it in domain, we have to know the restrictions, okay? You gotta find the restrictions. So I am not even gonna attempt it to graph this, okay? This is a big mess, <laughs> okay? Big mess. All right, let's go over the homework real quick. I'm gonna see if I can put it up real quick. Um, topic 15, let me see. Okay. So question number one is on the handwritten portion. So instead of asking you to type it out, everything, I think writing it down is a little bit easier. 
All right, so just like what we did, um, write the f of x as a, single, as a single term. So I need you to take the denominator times the whole number, then plus a nine. And then once you wrote it out, simplify it, you will lose something like this. Earlier, my example was using two plus, I think. Two plus one over x. So it doesn't matter what, doesn't matter if it's a plus or minus, you do the same thing, x times one, right? Denominator times the whole number. This time, instead of adding a numerator, you will have to subtract your numerator. So that'll be x times one, which is x, and subtract your numerator, minus three. So, there, so that'll just be x minus three, right? x times one, minus three, x minus three over x. So that's the, that's a single term for number two. Then I want you to write out f of g of x. So that means I want you to take function g, substitute into function f, wherever you see an x. So you will look something like this. All right, but this one is tricky because the example I just show you, I keep on saying, I keep on saying right here, this x, right, denominator, right, this x, that this x is what I'm looking for as an LCD. But I, I, I mentioned it, this x is to the first power, right? Because right now this parenthesis outside is to the first power. But on the homework, on the homework, this is a square. So technically this, this denominator is x squared. This is x to the first power, that's x to the first power. So what should be your LCD? If you have x squared, x and x, what should, what should be your LCD? Remember, find the LCD means what? We got to count the repeated factors and the non-repeated factors. So out of the three denominator, one is x squared, the other two are x. If you count the repeated factor, that's x. If you also count the non-repeated factor, that's another x. So your LCD here got to be what? x squared. So now you're gonna multiply every term by x squared for number five. All right, then you will look something similar to this, which is this part, right? Not so bad after I multiply everything by LCD. Okay. And then once you've done that, just multiply the top, simplify it for me. And that was it. That's all the homework. That's one question. All right, so we'll end right here.